Hi, I'm Peggy Fair, and welcome to the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Today, art business consultant Carolyn Edland is going to be giving us tips on how to get into juried art shows and competitions as well. Now, she's got a lot of qualifications. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you think it's simple, stay tuned. There's a lot to it that you can really learn. Now, the Understand Photography Show is first a podcast, so if you're wondering why we don't have any visuals and pictures, that's why. <laughs> but we do put the behind the scenes on YouTube and Friday. In fact, we do a watch party every Friday on Facebook, so if you want to join me in watching the show together, please do. We while you're on Facebook, we have a couple of Facebook groups. The first one is called the Understand Photography Group, and that is for sharing your photographs. In fact, Joe Fitzpatrick started um, Monochrome Mondays and Whatever Wednesdays, and a lot of people think it's fun to share. That's where you ask questions. You know, what kind of camera do I buy? Hey, my camera's giving me this error message. I really want to learn how to do bird photography. All that kind of stuff goes in the Understand Photography Group. Our other group is called Selling Your Photography as Art. Now this is a good show for you guys, so you should join that group. Of course, Facebook groups are free. And in that group, we talk about how do we sell our art? You know, what can we do to get into the shows? How do I sell more at a show? How do I sell my photos online? How do I get into an art gallery? All that kind of stuff we talk about in that group. So just go to facebook.com slash understand photography and you'll see the groups. Um, last thing I want to talk about is the four weeks to proficiency in photography. That is our interactive online class. So you get a lot of feedback in that class. It's a foundational class. You're going to learn a lot about photography. <clears throat> Even if you think you know a lot about photography, you'll probably learn quite a bit in this class but it is geared towards beginners, so don't be afraid of it either. First class is shooting in the manual mode. You've got to learn a lot of foundational stuff, and then everything else gets easy. All right, that's it for all my commercials. I'm going to introduce <laughs> Carolyn. Carolyn Edlin is an art business consultant and the founder of Artsy Shark, which is a site dedicated to helping artists build their businesses. So welcome, Carolyn. Thank you, Peggy. I am so glad to be back here. It's been like a year or two since I did this show with you. Yeah, I and forgot to are, mention that you're a repeat guest. I am a repeat guest, <laughs> but you know, it's so funny because I was here, I think it was been like two years, and clearly you're just doing this every week like clockwork. I think your your stuff is is phenomenal. I'm always recommending you to my friends and photographers. So anyway, congratulations on, on this long-running show. Thank you. You're doing a great job. It's a lot you're of work. Good, I know it's a lot of work. <laughs> Put so, me to work today. <laughs> all right. So tell the audience about you. What qualifies you to talk about this subject? Oh my gosh! Yeah, getting juried in. Number one, um, I am a juror, and I jury in a number of different ways. I know that this is a hot topic because everybody wants to get in, whether it's to an exhibition, they might want to get into an art fair, they might want to get into a competition, they might want to get their work on the cover of a magazine. You know, whatever that competition is how do i get an edge how do i get in and you know we need to understand kind of the world of, of what goes on um, in the mind of the juror and as a juror um, i see everything i've juried some of the top uh, art shows in the country mm -hmm. um, i've juried competitions i've been a judge for competitions and it shows and at my uh, own website artcshark.com, I jury uh, submissions for featured artists several times a year. So all in all, I probably look at between two to three thousand submissions a year. And my experience on the other side of things and what I see and what I can tell you and what you know I know as an artist, I used to I had uh, my own studio for 20 years. so. I had to have my own slides back in the day. I had slides taken. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've been on both sides of it. And there's just so much to know um, for artists who want to get juried in. The one thing, and I'll say this up front, and it, it, this it sums up everything that we're going to talk about today. The more professionally you present yourself, the more seriously you will be taken. Okay. It is 
all about professionalism. You know this, Peggy, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about professionalism. So if that's you know the way that you approach your business, you have a better chance. But if you've got issues, you need to straighten them out. And we can go into some of those today. Yeah, because I think most people don't know if they're not professional or not. So let's talk about some of that today. Yeah. So yeah. let's start like way from the beginning, though. Let's say that I am a landscape photographer or a bird photographer and I want to start doing art shows. How do, how do I start? Where do I go? How do I find the right ones? How do I choose the right one? Right. How expensive are they? That's a lot oh, of questions. I, I, I see, I mean, <laughs> there are many different types of shows. Okay. And they will range from you know, the outdoor festival that's downtown in, in your town or on the corner or something that's at a church bazaar, very inexpensive, that's not even juried, all the way up to something like Art Basel and some of the big international fairs. There are nationally known art fairs, like Startup Art Fair and the Affordable Art Fair, and that level um, of art fair where um, it's pricey, and the artists who go to a place like this might be needing gallery owners, okay. curators, you know, besides collectors, uh, you know, um, people from museums, the press, they're, they're meeting those people as well as the public. And maybe they're looking to get into some fine galleries or something like that. Okay, and you're talking about an art show like in the street? Is that what you're talking no, about? What are you talking about? that would be an art fair that okay, you might so find more of a, on a national level. Startup Art Fair is a good example of that. And that They're is a LA, brand? San is that Francisco, a brand? Francisco and Houston. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a brand. Startup And then art there's fair. the Affordable Art Fair, and then there's the other art fair. There, these are, these are um, names of art, art shows. Okay, because I wasn't following that. Okay, yeah. okay. It's, if you're down in Miami, you know, if you're at Art Basel, uh -huh. then you've got uh, Aqua Art Mar Miami, and you know, Spectrum on the Red Dot Fair. There's all of these uh, these high level art fairs, and then at a lower level, there's um, shows and festivals that might be in your state. Some will be indoors, okay. especially in the winter if you were in a cold state. Mm -hmm. uh, in Florida, here, lots of outdoor shows, and they range from high end and very expensive and very well known shows like Coconut Grove, you know, and uh, down to a very inexpensive show. So there's a broad range. If you are serious about what you're doing, okay. I would say you're going to want to do something juried. If you just go down to the church on the corner and they've got everything in the world thrown out on tables, you're probably dealing with a very low level uh, and, and a bargain hunter type of people coming in. That's not your crowd. If you want to sell art, you know, you want people who will appreciate the value of what you have. So you want to get into the best jury shows that you can. There's gonna be a wide variety of booth fees, ranging from a couple hundred dollars to thousands of dollars. Oh, okay. You know, depending on where you go and what you do is a big range. Like how many thousands for the high end, high expensive end? Um, I think if you're getting into um, some of the finer art fairs, uh, two to three thousand dollars for a booth. Wow. The galleries, that go to the big international shows like Art Basel, they're paying $50,000 to be there, but only galleries can exhibit at those. So yeah. take those off the table. Right. For the average photographer out there or the average artist out there, you know, you'd be looking at something, you know, what is in your state, what is in your region that are the better shows? Now, how do you find out what they are? Yeah. You might look online okay. and you'll look at directories of shows. Right. Artfaircalendar.com, my friend Connie Mettler owns that. She runs that and there. Uh, that's a guide. Um, Callforentry.org, which is also known as Cafe, okay. has listings, calls for artists, different shows in different states. Okay. Um, so you can see what's available out there. They might give you attendance figures. Um, if you're thinking about doing some shows, I think you should think carefully. Um, walk the show ideally before you do it. In a perfect world, you'll say, I've been there. I walked the show. I think that my work belongs there. Okay. And um, it's a nice turnout. And also, you want to look at what are other artists saying. You can look at reviews online. There are Facebook groups that will give you show reviews. Oh. You can go to um, Art Fair Insiders. Okay. Connie Mettler also owns that. I know I'm giving her a big plug. Hey, Connie. <laughs> I'll have to tell her to watch this. Watch this episode. Um, 
but it's other artists. And they're like, this show was great. Tons of people showed up, they were really spending, or this show's been going downhill for years, or nobody showed up this year. Okay. Or I might recommend it, but only if you know there's too many painters. Or you know, you see, you'll be hearing things. Okay. Yeah. What is the show known for? Uh, is it something that you want to do? Is it worth the travel? If you're going to go to Michigan, you know, is it worth driving? Is it worth the hotel cost? What is the booth fee? How much are people earning? You want to make sure you cover all of your costs, and you've got to earn for what you've made make a profit, pay yourself and everything else. Right, right. That's how business is. Now, you know, you just said something that I, and I, anyone who listens to the show knows I harp on this. A good way to meet those artists who are going to give you all this advice and say, the, oh, don't go to that show, do go to this show, is to join your local art association. Oh my gosh, yes. And Absolutely. I, I, people are so resistant to that, I don't understand it. You know, here's an interesting factoid that I learned <laughs> actually because a friend of mine was giving a presentation um, about artists and networking. Your network is one of the most powerful assets and tools you have to succeed. Mm. There was some kind of a study done years ago and they actually made it uh, I think a show at MoMA and they looked at famous artists in the past, most of them in Europe, and they were looking how wide and diverse is their network. And the most famous artists had the biggest networks of all. Mm -hmm. And what they found, and this will blow your mind, talent had nothing to do with success. Nothing. It was your network, your contacts, who you know. I mean, I hate to say it, but if I know Peggy Farron, and Peggy Farron is in with a bunch of people that I want to meet, and I become friends with you, I've got, I've got an in to the parties that you go to, the meetings that you have, I could be referred by you, I'm included in your, your uh, email list or whatever, I'm learning from you, and we do stuff together, and actually, Peggy, we have done stuff yeah, together. Yeah, and look at Connie Mettler. I don't know her, but she's been she's plugged awesome. on the show through the third Connie. time now. I love her. <laughs> she, she's that, you know what, you would love her too, but anyway. But, so, but that's the point. It's the point. You're her friend, and all of a sudden, you're I do, promoting her everywhere. She and I, yeah, and we partner up together to do business, as you and I have. Mm -hmm. And you know that those people who are in your group, who you trust, and who you know are professional, those are the people that you end up doing business with, and as they're reliable, you go to them more and more. And I met you at the Naples Art Association. Thank you, I, I did. took your class. You took my class, thank that's you. That's how I met you, so yeah. that's again. And then we turned around, and I hired you to give a class. That's right. Because you're so <laughs> awesome. <Aww. laughs> All right, it's so that, true. but that's enough, true. Enough, enough mutual love here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so you've thrown out a lot of places to start and a lot of great advice about networking and asking the other artists about which show. Yes. Okay, so now what? I've decided on a show. Right. Well, I think you ought to not decide on one show. Okay. Because chances are you might not get in. Let's say you want to go to Coconut Grove, but what are the odds? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what their exact odds are, but what you'll want to do is look at your year, do some planning for the year. Okay. We know that depending on the area, shows happen at different times of year. So, for example, here in Florida, we know that shows happen in the winter. That's the most common time, and all the big shows are, are in season when all the tourists come down. But if you're living up north, then you're going to be looking probably at spring, summer, and fall, and you'll know what are the top shows in your area. So, you might be planning your fall shows. Here we are early in the year, that's when the shows are going to jury. And check on your, your listings, on your directories, uh, what are the deadlines, make sure you get out well ahead of them so you're prepared. You don't want to be applying at the last minute when you're scrambling. Look at the fall shows. So what are the deadlines for them? Put that on your calendar. Say, I, you know, I want to do four shows this year in the fall, maybe I'll apply to eight. See okay. which ones I can get into. Okay. And so you'll be looking at the, what, you know, I would say um, maybe your summer like a stretch goal, like these are top shows, I really want to get into them, I might not. Yeah. So let me look at some mid-range shows and what are some shows that I feel like definitely are old standbys for me or I could get into. Don't do a show just because it's close and don't do a show mm -hmm. just because it's cheap. Okay. Because it might end up being expensive and a big waste of your time. 
choose a show because it's right for you and you're getting good reviews and you know it's got a reputation and you're familiar with it. Maybe you've gone there, maybe you've been reading about it a lot, you've, let, you've checked into the reviews, do your due diligence, make sure you know, that you're, you're applying to the right ones. Now, okay, so are you saying at least six months ahead of time is when you start? start? Well, you're gonna have to look at the deadlines. Are a they lot usually of these shows that? are well ahead. For example, shows that happen this fall, they might have a March 1st deadline okay. for your application, depending probably on how many applications they receive. Now, here's a kind of a giveaway. If there's a show that has rolling applications that they accept up until the date of the show, that's either a show that's new or a show that's not getting quite enough applications to fill it until the end. And that's probably not a show that's as competitive or as desirable to do. Ooh, that's some good right? advice. So if they're, yeah. if they're so do but it might be just a new show. There might be some excellent promoters out there and they've got a top notch show and they, or maybe one or two. Then they've got three shows that are kind of new, they're not as big of a crowd. Sometimes you gotta work your way up through those lower level shows in order to get into the top shows. And this is kind of political, but that doesn't always happen. Um, or sometimes in order to get into the top show, they wanna see you do some of their other shows to help feed mm -hmm. the quality of work in okay. those other shows. That makes, that makes really good sense. You know, sense. it's just kind of good business for them. Yeah. They're looking for some loyal exhibitors who aren't just picking off their top shows and saying the heck with the rest of your calendar. Okay. Yeah, because you know who runs them? People. Of course. <laughs> People have feelings. Of course. And you know, they might say, well, we've got this new show. It's happening here. We really want this to be a success. If we can get our best artists in and our photographers and the craft people or whatever doing it, and we can put on a top-notch show, then people are going to you know, pay attention, they're going to love it, and it's going to be successful. Right. But if we have too small of a show and the quality is kind of iffy, you know. Because the promoters want to do it every year. Yeah, and you know, so I So they honestly, have a lot, they really want it to succeed. They're in a risky business. They've got, weather is going to be a factor. They've got a, you know, a promotion. It's got, a, everything has to work. It's got to, like, the stars need to align for them to have a top show. And um, so they're in a business where, I think they're taking some chances and they're looking for people who will really be loyal to them and almost be partners with them. So that if you're doing a great show and you really help promote that show and you know, you're know you a great exhibitor for them, you, maybe you show up uh, in their marketing, maybe your stuff is on their postcards. Mm. You know, It's the same way with galleries. If you're a good partner to them, then they know who you are. They'll be oh, a good partner yeah. to you. That's really good advice too. In any business. Goes right back to your network, right? Yes. So, all right, so let's say you've decided on the eight shows you're gonna apply, now what? So, you, you want to look at all of their applications. Make sure you know when those deadlines are so you don't miss them, mm -hmm. and read every prospectus or show application. Now, sometimes it's called a prospectus if it's, let's say, an exhibition at a gallery or let's say an art center. Okay. That's a little different because that's just where you're showing your work. They're gonna have a gallery opening. You know, you're in a group show for a month or something like that. Okay. Those are also competitions and they also have jurying processes. Okay. But we're talking about fairs and festivals here. Right. So, read the instructions. <sighs> you know, what do they need? Fill it out to the letter. If you do not understand, Call the promoter or email them. I'm unclear about one of your, you know, submission rules. Please clarify this for me. Okay. They will answer. They'll be happy to do that. And make sure that you submit it exactly as required. Otherwise, number one, they don't. They know that you don't know how to follow directions. That's a maybe a possible rejection in itself. Right. Because if you're clueless, they don't want to deal with you. Exactly. Right. Right. Uh, secondly, if you are too late or you, know, you, you really meant to do this and you did that, you're, you're screwing yourself up. The people who get in to the shows are the people with a terrific body of work who are very professional in everything they do. They have outstanding images. And if you're a photographer, images are your stock in trade. Mm -hmm. They have their submission put together so that the, let's say it's 
four shots of their work and a booth shot. That's very common. Okay. They know exactly what to put together in that grouping. They have a terrific booth shot. They have a well put together application that's complete and professional looking. They don't even have typos. And the whole thing comes in in one nice package to the promoter well ahead of time and they're prepared. That's how you get in. And that's what you're talking about professional. That's what I'm talking about, yes. <laughs> Because some people think, well, my work is professional, but their behavior is not be professional. That's such a dead giveaway. I mean, you're right. If you're a photographer, and let's, and most of your listeners are, right? Mm -hmm. One would hope that you know how to photograph things. Exactly. Let's start there. Exactly. Okay. So if you don't, uh, if your photography is needs help, you know what? If you need help with photography, you need to get in touch with Peggy. Mm -hmm. You need to take <laughs> classes. You need to understand how to put together a really smart portfolio. If you're like an artist who's specializing in something, you want to go deeply into that so your body of work stands out. Mm -hmm. So you've got a really signature look or you've got that really stand out, sit up and take notice, wow, I'm in love with this type of submission. Right. When I'm a juror, I'm looking at 700 people. I'm starting to go to sleep. Yeah. You know, it's the same, the same, the same. How are you going to knock me out? What are you going to show me that's like, pow, I want to see your very best work smack up front. Yeah. In those four images, uh -huh. tell me a story. Okay. They should relate to each other. They should be a, a tight grouping that makes a statement. I don't want to see the breadth of what you do. I want to see the depth of what you do. Okay, and I'm just going to give a short story because then I want you to go into that a little bit more. But this guy who I know quite well, he's a local photographer and he really wanted to start getting into the art shows. Well, I'm a juror for the Naples Artist Show Association local shows. So I, um, I saw his work and I, I recognized it. But he didn't get in that first show because he put one bird photography, photograph, one black and white of a dancer, one landscape and the one was on metal shiny metal one was on canvas one was framed and he thought that variety was what the jurors wanted to see that is exactly wrong i know it, and i can, and by the way let me just stop. yeah no he changed changes. and he's been in many shows since then yeah so he, okay so what did he do to change Tell me how he, he sharpened showed, up his presentation. Well, he's mostly a bird, because he asked me. Yeah. Look, at this point, everybody knows I'm one of the jurors, you know? <laughs> right. And so he asked me, and I, so I told him exactly what the problem was. And the next time, he is mostly a bird photographer. That's what he put in there. He put it all on, you know, the same either metal or canvas or whatever. I can't remember Right. Now. But that's how he got in the next show. Yeah. He, he, so, uh, go ahead. Exactly. So you, you just pointed out two ways that he's consistent. Actually, three. Okay. One, his subject matter is now consistent. He's showing all birds. Right. Maybe he has landscapes. Who cares? He wants to get in. You know, his booth is not expected to be only those four images, right? But right. he's showing you his deeply into his specialty. So his uh, subject matter should be consistent and his medium. He's, what is the background? Um, it's all metal, then show me four pieces that are metal. Another thing that I think is a good way to show consistency is the palette. So if I'm seeing some things that are soft focus and very dreamy looking, don't throw something in that's sharp and, and you know, is an outlier. I want to see a story told where everything relates to each other. And you know, in a jury's viewpoint, if I'm looking at the computer and I'm jurying, and some there are some different online jurying systems, Zapplication is a big one, a Jury Dart Services is another, I've used both of them, and you might see two images over two, okay. right? Uh -huh. Two over two, and then you can click for the optional booth slide, oh, which we'll talk about okay. later. So you might be seeing two over two. The first image starts in the top left, because we're, you know, in this country at least we're going right to left to right uh -huh. and then left to right. So if you're leading in with that strong image, 
I actually like to see if there is, if there is um, kind of a composition or a direction to the photo. I like to see it facing inwards. So if that bird's beak is, is facing to the right from the left, he's leading me to the next photo. And I'm, look, my eye is drawn there. Then I'm going to the next one. And then as I wrap it up at the end, it's facing back inwards so that we almost have a little contained unit of those beautifully put together images that make a collection. Oh, you got me all excited. <laughs> do you, do you I see well, what I'm saying? This is something that I have so many people, you know, our four weeks to proficiency class, the second class is composition. Oh, I have a good eye. No, no, you don't. <laughs> Because it's not just the photograph, it's how you put the photographs together, yes. it's all this other stuff on your website. If yes. you have birds facing off the side of your website, yes. that's jarring to people. The birds need to be facing in. That's correct. And same with the jurors. The same with, yes, and the same with the jurors. And like you said, on your website, if you're putting something on your home page, I want to see your very best photograph there. Bam! Draw me in, lead me to more, knock me out, and invite me in the door. I don't want to see something that is okay and save the best for last. Oh, no, no, no. Lead me in with a, the cover shot, okay. you know. I want okay. to see that first. So put your, put your package together. Okay. Make sure that it tells that story. Um, I have um, heard of, of artists showing things like if they, let, let's say they have a theme like Seasons winter spring summer fall uh -huh. that might be a nice way to tell oh, a story yeah. you know if you're doing landscapes if that's what you do or even birds or birds even of birds. the summer birds of the spring it's, i mean if, it's, if it makes sense that way yeah. but if you don't or know the same bird it, i don't know <laughs> whatever it depends on what what reflects your body of work but if you aren't sure go to that art group that you have that network that you have and get people's opinions. Yeah. They'll tell you, this is, you know, pull that one out. Right. That's bothering me. And I have to say, and I, I jury many mediums, not only photography, but I'm looking at a grouping of four and this is like sticking out like a sore thumb. I might give them a point off because I'm like, what is this? This just doesn't make sense. Right. So we see that, of course, you know, our yeah. shows are for artists starting out, the ones that I juror. Mm -hmm. And you'll see this beautiful, three pictures and then this fourth picture that you're like, what the heck is this doing here? Yeah. It just doesn't make sense with this. Well, I think that that is something that artists need to do with their entire collection, their entire body of work. You know, you will be judged on the weakest one you show. That is what people are going to remember. They're going to go, wow, 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 Ugh. And then they're going, yeah, get rid of this guy. I know. I still, I'm thinking of the last time I jurored that there was this three, these three bright, vibrant pictures and then this like Asian looking faded picture. And like, I'm what thinking of that right here? now. Like, cause that, we all, all four of us were like, what the heck? Yeah. Yeah. It, it and it was you. memorable because it, it was not you. good. Yeah. And the problem is that people and, and everybody does this. People can't step outside of themselves. They don't know how they're viewed by others. So if I am to show you X, I think it looks great because, you know, it's, it's something that I'm very familiar with. I need to know what a stranger who's never seen my work before will give with the feedback that they have. Right. In fact, never ask, especially your mother, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> None of your relatives or even your good friends who just, they lo I love everything you oh, do. Oh, I know. You know, people don't want to hear that. They're like, be honest with me. And you'll say, this piece has a problem because of this. Well, that's something to consider. Yeah, and the, so. the other thing, and we have a mutual friend, Muffy, and mm -hmm. she's jurored at, at times, and she's so picky about like the edges of the canvases and the yeah. frames, that they better be clean, they better be, you know, whatever, they better be nice. And, and she's absolutely right. You know, the people who get into these shows, and everybody knows who they are, who is the person in your medium, in your community, who's always juried in. They're in every book, in every guide. They're always getting shows. They're, you're like, that person, you know, please, you know. You're getting into everything. They have outstanding photos. They're not showing edges. They're not making mistakes. They've got the perfect package and they're using it over and over. If you take the time to put together all the great stuff that you need to give, to hand me an ideal package of your work, 
you can use it over and over. Prepare it once and use it many times. Maybe adjust your application to the show, but when you've got great materials, they'll serve you for a long time, right? I want to talk about that for a minute because, okay, at, when I'm juroring for this particular show, it's th like three times a year I do yeah. this, they write an explanation of their work. Can you talk about that? Like what do jurors look for well, in I, the writing part of it? Oh, I, and I think that's a great point. There's, there's two parts where I actually see writing. As a juror, I'm not going to, I don't know who they are. Because unless, now when I jury for my own site, I know who I'm jurying. But if I'm jurying for an art fair or a show, it's a blind jury. So I don't know who these people are. Although, as you said, sometimes you recognize them, but you still try to be fair. Mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, they don't know who you are. So the only information they have about you is one, your visuals, okay. and number two, any written information that they are privy to that's being shown on the screen where they're jurying. So mostly, I think it's descriptions of their work. Uh -huh. um, on some of these uh, you know, jury systems, you can hover over an image and a little window will pop up and say title, description, size, and maybe a sentence or two is available there for you to tell about that piece. Okay. That's where you can really shine oh. because it's an additional bit of supporting information okay. at, it, that, that backs up your images. So it might say, um, hand-constructed silk jacket, you know, with a custom lining that's, you know, made with special pleats, um, which is hand-dyed material. I mean, you're going to, I'm like, wow, wow, wow. I didn't know all of the steps that are going into this amazing jacket. Right. Now, in that case, let's say you do have wearable art. I realize you have a lot of photographers here, yeah, but yeah. you're going to have a model because that's how your work would best be shown is if somebody's wearing it. But if you're showing a model in, a, in an image, you might even, you might even cut off their head. You want the place, right, you, right. you want the, the wearable, the garment to get, that's what shines, not some beautiful model or handsome model. You want them that to, you know, take, uh, right. You don't want to take away from row. Right. Right. So, um, you need to make that decision depending on the medium, you know, that you have. However, if I'm looking at a photography, some photography is abstract. Right. And then there's you know? also a degree of now also through the professional photographers of America, degree of difficulty is part of the competition. Okay. So if you put something in there about the degree of difficulty, that a juror, a uh, photography juror is going to pay attention to that. So what what might you put in there? Like um, what what might be a difficult level that you might explain? Is it uh, time lapse or you something know, or? This is well no, like I took this picture at high noon, which of course is the worst time of day to take pictures, and I had to overcome the bad lighting and something. Right. I mean, obviously, I'm making it too long, but if you could say somehow, I love or that. I got up at four o'clock in the morning and waited yes. 12 hours right. for 25 days in a row to get this shot. <laughs> you know, I know a guy who's in New York City, and he takes pictures of the moon and eclipses over New York, like perfectly positioned with the buildings and the landscape. I mean, his his photography is astonishing. But you're right. He has to wait till certain nights. He's got to be up at three in the morning. He's got to be, everything has to be perfect. And nowadays, it's a good idea to say that because everybody looks at stuff and, oh, that's Photoshopped. Exactly. I, I love that. So what you're telling me is this is done in a certain way, you know, whether it's photography or whether it's something wood carving, whatever it is that you do, some of that art or craft is extremely involved. Processes are things you don't understand. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not easy. You want to share that, that expertise that you have. And I think people respect and, you know, they want to hear that. And that's another thing in the, in the juror process for the Naples Art Association. They have, you can write a little paragraph about your work. 
Yes. And a lot of times we're like, well, this guy's a woodworker, but did he make this? Because this doesn't really fit with everything. No, he just bought that piece. There yeah. was another lady who just glued pieces of glass. I mean, it was pretty stuff, but it was a craft. It wasn't really what we call art. She didn't make the glass beads herself. She didn't make the, you know, it's not. She was more assembling something than exactly. making it from the raw material. A lot of, a lot of, um, you know, jewelry artists do the same thing. Right, right. If they're just assembling stuff, they don't get in. Well, that's, there are certain uh, shows that they will not allow yeah. uh, jewelry unless you are hand, uh, if you're a metal smith and you're working with the raw materials or you're making jewelry out of another material and you're working with, you know, creating the design, but if it's beaded or made from manufactured components, you're right. And they might, that, if, you, if that's what you make, you know what, you can still do some shows. Right. And read the rules. If they read say don't the apply, rules. don't apply. Yeah. There are some people who can transcend something. They are so good at something that they've bought, you know, materials, and they're knocking you out because right. of the way they're putting it together. But that's right. a whole other level. And that might be something in photography that you put together these amazing frames, you know, that just like add to the whole picture, and you paint the frames or something, you know. Right. That's right. That's the kind of stuff. Although as at least for me as a juror, I want to understand their process. Exactly. You should never assume that anybody gets what you do. Yeah. Ooh, that was really, that's like yeah, a You quote. need to tell them, this is what I do, this is how it's made, and this is why it matters. Okay. So, all right. So, we've decided on our four pictures in our booth image. Well, your booth image is a big deal. Okay, go ahead. Right. So. I got to tell you, your booth image can make or break your application. Okay. And I'm a stickler on this. Well, I'm a stickler on all kinds of things. <laughs> but but still, that's your, one of your things. That's what I have to like do, you know? My finishes. standards are high. <laughs> so your booth, your booth slide. So it's a hassle for people. They're like, I don't have one. What can you do? Right. Well, number one, if you are at a show, uh, it might be that there's somebody walking around. They're taking booth shots. They're a photographer. Hey, I'm here for 30 bucks. I'll take your booth shot. Yes, we'll take it. Is your booth going to be perfect? Maybe or maybe not. I mean, is the light going to be right? Are there cords showing? You better clean your booth up. Okay. If you're going to get a booth shot taken, ideally you wouldn't do it during show hours. It'd be like earlier or later. Mm -hmm. And clear everything out. I want your booth to look like a gallery. Okay. None of, I don't want to see the your, you know, a crooked tablecloth or a bunch of stuff stuck on a table. Clear it out. The other thing that you cannot have showing is your name. So if you have a big sign that has Peggy Farron on it, right. you're either going to have to blur that out or take that down because then you're not... Uh, you don't qualify. Well, or, you well, have to be blind to the jury. Right, so you can put right, your name right. there. So um, that's a great way to get a booth shot is to have a professional take it or if you are a photographer, take that. Um, some people will set their booth up at home okay. and it might be an indoor booth set up, which I like because they can really, you know, get the lighting correct and everything and it's a beautiful indoor booth. Um, some people will do an outdoor booth okay. and they get the right time of day on a diffuse light or whatever is showing and then they're, then they're really hanging it like a gallery. It's not, it's not a true booth shot because it's not exactly what would be in your booth if you were right. sitting there or standing there. But it's, it, it shows like a gallery. You will never be in the, the booth shot. You should not be in it, oh, and your name should not be okay. in it. It is empty. Okay. What if you cannot do that? Well, some people will Photoshop in a booth shot. Wow. And you, there's ways, and there's, you know, software that you can show, you know, let's say you have photography or paintings or whatever. You could do 2D art that looks like it's going down a wall and it's at an angle. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. And so... How might you um, set up an imaginary booth if you had that background and you were just, you know, shopping things in? Okay. Well, again, you want that to look like a gallery. I would say put your most striking piece as an anchor piece, maybe at the back so that it's kind of the centerpiece. Mm -hmm. It's really going to be grabbing and attention. And something big so they can something see it. Something bold, something big. Because the picture's not going to be that big. Right. Well, it's, a, it's an image, I imagine, that would... Yeah, but if you're looking, at how are you juring on a computer screen? You're juring on the computer screen. So it's not going to be so a So it's something picture. that's going to be a focal point. Yeah. And put that at, you know, depending on how your layout is, you're going to put that in a, in a, in a, a 
you have to draw the eye. Uh -huh. You might show some groupings. If you make some smaller works, um, you know, if there's some larger pieces. One thing I probably would not do, let's say you have a bin where people can flip through. Uh -huh. You might not want to put that in there because some shows won't allow them. Oh, interesting. So okay. they, if, they, if they say, you know, only original work. Now for photographers, I'm not quite sure what those rules might be, but if there's anything that you, that might either get you, <laughs> disqualified from a show mm -hmm. or anything in your booth that looks bad, it's going to wreck it. I literally yesterday was talking to an artist, now he's a painter, and he said, well, um, I needed to take a booth shot and I was on my porch and I, I, just, I just put a rug down just to cover you know, the floor of the porch and it wasn't the best rug and I got a complaint about the way that the floor looked in my booth. And he said, I tried to explain to them, that really isn't the rug I'm going to use. And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. too late. Yeah. There's no do-overs. There's no, well, let me explain. It'll really be different. Your booth needs to look like it will look at the show okay. the best you can. And if you have a knockout booth slide, I mean, I say slide because I'm so old, but yeah. image, <laughs> if you have a knockout booth image, it could raise your score by a point. Oh. A bad booth image, boom, bad, down. down by a point. So when you have three or four or five jurors who are all scoring, they're going to be looking at the average of the scores. Okay. And a razor's edge might get you in. Oh. Your booth shot might get you in or out. Okay. Just like the other images that you, we just talked about in your collection. Okay. So if there are, and every, every uh, show is going to be different, but on average, let's say four picture. I know we asked for four pieces at the Naples it's Art Association. Common. So yeah. four plus the booth shot. That's what we ask for there, too. So um, that's pretty common. So you're, you've got that together. You've chosen the things. Now, one of the things that you talked about was your website has to be important, too. Well, well I'm not even going to see your website. You would not be seeing the website if there is a blind jury because they don't know who okay. you are. Right. Now, for my own site, I have um, calls for artists like three times a year and people submit and I am jurying from their website, which means oh. I'm, I know who they are. I mean, I don't know them, but I know what their name is. Right. And I'm going to go to their website and I am looking at their body of work on their website. Okay. There, if you have crummy photos, if you think you can get away with cell phone shots of your work and Photographers might not fall into that category, but if you have poor images, you are telling me, number one, that you're not very professional. Or if you have like a smug mug site, I'm sorry to smug mug, but those sites are just so unprofessional looking. They look like they're for beginner photographers who don't want to spend any money well, on a real website. If that's the case, it goes right back to what I said at the beginning. The more professionally you present mm -hmm. yourself, the more seriously you'll be taken. So yeah, if your site is a mess or it looks like something from 1989 <laughs> or, you know, clearly you've got all different size images because you don't know how to upload them or they're all high res and they load in little, you know, increments and it's like you can't, you know, nobody can look at them. It doesn't function well. You got a problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's not going to work. It's funny because you heard me whining a little bit about, oh, I need to make more money. And I look at my overhead, and my website is expensive. I've got all these mm -hmm. different plugins and all this other yeah. stuff. But I really only have one big competitor in town who's not nearly, you know, as big as we are, I guess, as far as photography training. Mm -hmm. And I know it's the website. His website is so basic. It is so. Like, you know, do there are you no want pictures somebody on his website. who cannot even represent themselves well online teaching you how to? Yeah, exactly. Honestly, take a look at the source. Yeah. So when you look at something that's beautifully done, well, of course you trust them more. You want to do business with them. People don't want to buy from amateurs. They no. want to buy from professionals. Good. Point. Are you a professional? Is that how you present yourself? Because if you don't, then maybe you need to get ready for prime time and come back later. Yeah. That's why people don't get into things. All right, so maybe I'm jumping ahead. You tell me. But go, go right Okay, ahead. so let's say we apply to eight shows and we don't get into any. Mm. Can we get feedback from the judges? I, uh, that is such a great point. I would encourage anyone who receives a rejection to 
go back to the jurors or the promoter or whoever is you know submitting to and say may I get some feedback now I personally always give feedback to people who apply and get jury, or, you know juried out or whatever um, and help them to understand how I saw their portfolio I'll definitely accentuate the positive aspects of it like I see you're doing this really well I really like this however I'm looking at these quality you know let's say it's a photographer I see that you have still lifes and you have abstracts and you have you know pictures of Rome and then you've got your dog I mean what is it that you really do it's all over the map I don't understand what your concept is it doesn't speak to me you know it, all this is just kind of helter-skelter on your site you're confusing me more than in compelling me. Yeah. So that might be my feedback. And I've given that feedback to some people. I remember um, there was a photographer in Virginia, and she, I love her, she's, she's wonderful. And she had all, the whole nine yards. She wanted to show everything that she did. And she, she was a generalist, where you really need to be a specialist. You know, and I told her this. And what she really loved doing was taking photographs of what they call century barns and she's up in Virginia where it's a very historic area and she was specializing in taking photographs of barns that were a hundred years old and older oh, and they wow. helped to tell the story of the history of the area it was a big Civil War area you know there was a lot of Revolutionary War I mean so much history there and she's looking back at the properties who owned them which barns are still uh, you know around which have been torn down she's documenting this for books and she's become known for doing that and she's like now I know what my identity is where I specialize in and people seek her out because she does you know she has that tight niche where she specialized in it and that's become her entire business so it's really wonderful for her oh, that is such a good point because you know and we joint taught a class here too I think we I can't remember now yeah. but anyway on you know just like a full day workshop and putting a portfolio together right. as part of it and everybody including me <laughs> as a photographer we like to do everything we like to shoot pictures of everything mm -hmm. We like macro, we like flowers, we like bugs, we like landscapes, we like right. birds, we like buildings, we like people. <laughs> so how do you get that look? Now sometimes yeah. it's editing, but if you look at some of the famous photographers of today, who do we think of? We think of Humans of New York. He's just got a theme. Yeah. This barn lady, she yeah. has a theme. Right. Joe took a uh, couple of workshops with Abandon America workshops. He has a theme, yeah. although now he's abandoned the world because he's doing trips to Romania and Greece and all these cool places to go and photograph abandoned buildings. You know, I, I do love niches and themes. I think they're very smart. And there are people around the world who love certain things. And that can be a real core audience and a market for your work. Now, if you do a lot of things, let's say you love travel photography and you also love birds. Okay. Does it mean you can't do both? Well, you can do both, but there are some questions. Okay. Um, what are you going to present to the world as the portfolio that you want to sell? Does it mean you can't take pictures of beach sunsets? No, you can. Or let's take a look at if you wanted to apply to a gallery show or a, you know a, a, an ex exhibition. You could do a collection of your work that's all birds because that would fit what you wanted to submit and you don't have to show them your website you might like your friend just submit the birds or you might go on a site like artwork archive where you can store all of your images and you can build certain collections so if you want to submit to a gallery mm -hmm. and they're a coastal gallery they don't care about Romania or abandoned right. buildings <laughs> they only really want to present you know coastal images and things that are perfect for their audience you can pull from your body of work, create a collection that's made to submit to them, and then that becomes your submission, and it's very tight, and you've put that together yeah. for that purpose. Yes, and that was a good point, because as photographers, we're probably gonna always want to photograph everything. Sure. But everything doesn't need to go into your portfolio, or you do them in collections, like you just said. Right, right. So, um, all right, what else, what are, what are we missing here? 
Let's summarize. Oh gosh. Let's summarize. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A lot. So, first thing is get. Ha, first thing is choosing. I'm going to back up from that. Okay. Instead Ooh. of choosing a show, okay. your body of work needs to be ready to the go. portfolio. Put your portfolio together so that you are ready to present your work and submit it to any jury. Oh, okay? that's good. So know what you're doing up front and have all that collateral put together. And that's a lot of work. It's a ton of work and it pays off because, like we said, you can use it over and over. Okay. You know? Yep. Um, then you're going to select shows that are right for you. You might walk the show, you're going to learn about the shows by looking at directories and listings, and you're going to get feedback from other artists. Is it a good show? You know, are people attending it? Is it right for you? Okay. And how much is it? Can you afford it? Yeah. You know, is it, is it going to fit in with, you know, your budget for doing shows? And let, can I just add to that? Because one of my problems with the shows is putting up the tent. You know, I think that's, and that's true a for a lot of people. That's a cost if you want to hire someone. It is. And some people, they just can't do shows. Or they might say, well, you know, ever since the tornado and the flood, I'm not doing any outdoor shows. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. So if that's something that you have decided is off the table, well, then look for indoor shows or sell in another way. Right. So you may, you may Or I decisions. was just thinking of the cost. Because you well, can, you need, many you need of them, a good booth. You need, yeah, you should but, have an indoor booth and an outdoor booth. But many of them. the shows, they will, there, there are people who will help you put the there booth are. together. But you have to factor that in well, as a cost. Well, you do. But you know what? I think the promoter should tell you, yes, we have people who can help you do this. Because if you're not a strong person or let's say you're disabled in some way, you can't be, you know, doing this, then absolutely they yeah. should have people who will come in you know, the tent guys or whatever, and they'll pop it up, get y'all set, pay them 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever it costs. Maybe they're, maybe they're renting the entire structure to you. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt I you. I love that. I just thought of I that. that's as, a really important Because that was a hard thing for me. Yeah. I didn't like that. I hated it, actually. Right. <laughs> I, I did, too, and I put up many a tent by myself. I bet. And then you, oh. So you find the show. You apply to the show on time. You, everything is perfect. You know, your grammar is correct. If they give you space to talk about, you know, the description of the work and you have two sentences, use it. Use it, like you said, to show what is the difficulty of this, this photograph or, you know, what, what's the location if that's site specific. Like, let's say you specialize in photographing the Grand Canyon, you know, and everything's about the Grand Well, you'll want to mention that, yeah. you know, this is such and such wall of the Grand Canyon. So, um, use the resources that you can in submitting to you know put your best foot forward and get it in on time follow all the rules when you hear back from them you might have to say yes i you know actually want to be in then you're going to want to send your booth fee in on time don't skip that oh, that'll yeah. get you thrown out um if you don't get in ask for feedback could you give me some feedback or reasons why I was not juried in. I think that's fair. I think people have a right to ask. I so too. whether you get answers or not, I don't know, but it's it, it helps you grow as an artist yeah. and it's gonna help you make, you know, avoid those mistakes next time. Make mm -hmm. your, your best presentation. So now the show is coming up. Then you've, of course, you've got going through the show and that's merchandising, setting up your, your booth like a gallery, and then you get into things like display and sales skills and everything else. Yeah, which and I, is, okay. And Heather can put a link to those shows that we talked about putting the booth together because that is really important too if you want to make any money, which is the whole reason you're there. You're there for exposure yeah. and money, but money more than exposure, am I right? Or Yes, but a lot of shows, whether okay. they're a high-level art fair, mm -hmm. whether they're uh, you know a festival that's in the street. One of the things that you're going to know going in is that quite often people will come into your booth, they love what you have, but they're not going to make a purchase. It is a meeting place. It is that initial contact where you meet people who love your work, mm -hmm. you get their name, you get their email address, and as you know, you put them on your email marketing list, and you will continue to stay in touch with them over time because the majority of sales are closed after a number of contacts. That is such a good point because I know a lot of people are like, oh, it was my first show, I didn't make any money. 
Well, what is your follow-up system? You yeah. have to have a system. Exactly, and you could make more sales after the show than you do at the show. Or what if you're at a show and someone walks in and they have a gallery and they're interested in your work and you're like, I would like to be in a gallery. I think this is a good thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So you meet this person and you know that, that this is a possibility that somebody says, well, or we have an exhibition coming up, I think I'd like you to apply. Are you ready? Do you have in your toolbox everything that you need to apply to a gallery exhibition or to put a package together for a gallery because you're going to want to follow up that lead with professional materials. So what I'm hearing you saying is you should be ready first. But on the other hand, that, don't let that stop you either. I, I agree. Because and people you're going to make terrible mistakes and you're going to learn <laughs> the hard way. You'll be like, what did I do? Yeah, you're going to do that a few times. Oh. But um, yeah. Oh my gosh, but your call to artists, this is airing on April 3rd, so May is it not won't that be far until away. May. That's, That's not too far subscribe away. Subscribe at www.artsyshark.com, get on my list, and then you'll get an invitation to apply. Now when you get to the website, is it clear on how to subscribe? Yeah, you'll get a big old pop-up <laughs> and say, hey, you know, you want to hear more and you want to get a free uh, e-book e about um, where to sell art online, then sign up. So. Definitely. Actually, I want to talk about your website just for a couple of minutes because sure. we only have a few minutes left. Uh -huh. But tell the audience about what your website offers because your website is amazing. My art, uh, my art website at, at artcshark.com um, does a couple of things. We present artists and their portfolios and their, and their um, stories through published features and that happens four days a week. On Wednesdays, I publish business articles, which are really helpful, cutting edge. I just had one on being a children's book illustrator, or how to get juried in, or how to present your work, or you know how to get Instagram fans, all kinds of different, really useful business articles for artists. Okay. Um, and then I offer personalized consulting, as you know. Um, I have a call for artists three times a year. We have other services like um, artist statement writing, and even artist media kits, which are super cool. A media kit is a, like a, a, a PDF or it could be a print document where you present your work, you present yourself, you might have a photo of yourself as the artist mm -hmm. with testimonials in it, your CV or your kind of like a resume might be in, in there like what exhibitions have you been in, what awards have you won, what press have you gotten and it kind of presents the whole package. Sometimes okay. you'll see this printed out in a wonderful little uh, you know, softbound book or something, but it also could be used as a, in a PDF form to reach out to the press or maybe to apply to a gallery, something like okay. that. Consider it supporting material for your portfolio. Okay, yeah. I mean, there is so much yeah, good information on your website. There. It's unbelievable. And most of it is free. Yeah, yeah. So you're, I'm not asking you to pay something to get there. It's, but you do have some online classes. I do. I offer uh, different courses. And I will have portfolio, uh, present a dynamic portfolio. I have a sales uh, strategies or marketing strategies course. I have a pricing course that I'm going to re-release soon. So good stuff coming up. Pricing is really, really hard for photographers, for artists in general. Yeah. So that's... It's an enormous subject we'll have to get into one day. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. topic. Well, thank you so much for being on the Understand Photography thank Show Thank you again. for having me. Thank you. You're wonderful. It's a pleasure coming back as always. And Great thank you for driving you. down because it was quite a way for you, I know. Yeah. So, well, and for I your husband, people. thank yes. you. <laughs> and thank to you. our audience, thank you so much for joining us on the Understand Photography this show, this week, I should say. Um, if you can do us a favor and give us a, a review on iTunes, we really appreciate it. And those reviews on iTunes help us come up in the search engines. Now, Heather, when she puts together the show notes, she puts a link right to it. So you just click on that link and um, leave us a review. Also, on understandphotography.com, we'll have the show notes from today's show. So Carolyn just had a thousand things come out of her mouth that are important that you might want to know about. So those will be in the show notes. Understandphotography.com. I'm Peggy Farron. Thanks so much for watching the Understand Photography Show. We'll see you next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Get up.